I'm noticing his use of motive um, more than anything else right now. Like if you draw a line here, I don't know if you can see the music. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. If you draw a line yeah. there, which is four bar, it's like kind of after the four bar sort of phrase. He's basically repeating the same uh, melody, the same music, but he's just transposed it. You now you see that, like if you if you look at that, and then you look at so like this bar, we've got the four quarter notes and the sorry the four eighth notes and the quarter note, and then this would be this the parallel bar says so four four quarter, four eighth notes and a quarter note, and then we get the grace note and the quarter notes, grace note and the quarter notes dotted quarter note, bass note. 16th so that that bar is the equivalent of this bar and then th bar three is the equivalent of bar seven it's the same melody even um but with different harmony but the same rhythm and then bar eight varies from bar four a little bit more so he's really playing on motive and that's so usually there's in in composition there's usually some form of unity or invariability and then there's some and then there'll be some variation. Usually composers desire both. And um, harmonically though, I mean, I'm seeing, I'm seeing some, I would call this maybe, there's a term called um, pan diatonicism, where composers use the diatonic scale um, they use diatonic notes, but but not with the usual common practice. So I'm seeing triads, you know, like you see like D triad there and an E chord here and a B sort of a B minor chord there. Uh, and we get like a G to a C. So that's kind of suggesting a move to C major, <laughs> but nothing, there's no real sense of tonic or, or the, if there is, it's very, very momentary like there's a momentary sense of tonic and then it moves somewhere else. So it gives a very unstable feel to the harmony. Even the melody at the start is quite. It's made up of a lot of semitones, you know, you've got C to D flat. Um, and then the G flat to G, uh, sorry, A flat to G and then G to G flat and then G flat to F natural and then F natural to E. That's all semitone motion chromatic motion in the melody so that's also quite unstable <coughs> excuse me that's quite unstable too but that gives that that g to the c gives a little bit of a feeling in the bass gives some feeling of you know a little bit of a standard harmonic progression That's beautiful. Yeah. So you go, yeah, it goes to the C. Is it? I think there might be a relationship. If you go C to D, uh, he's doing that C to D there. And then here he's going B minor to E. Sometimes you have to look for relationships of intervals. I don't think there is one here, though. Uh, C to D is a, like a second. B to E is a sixth. That's quite a that's quite a nice one. I like that B B to the E. It almost creates a bit of a modal because you're there's a B minor. It's like B minor going to E major. That's a nice progression there. And then yeah, he does basically the same thing, but oops, sorry. So and it's interesting. It's almost like the, the, the opening, it's almost suggesting F minor to me because we get the D flat and the A flat.
and E natural. So if you put all those notes together to, and form the scale, you'd probably get the closest thing would be F minor, I think. Harmonic minor? Yeah, harmonic minor with the E natural. Um, but the G flat really th throws things um, around quite a bit. It throws off the scent quite a lot. Um, that one. It's like a accented passing tone, like really accented. And then the way that moves to the G natural in the bass is quite dissonant. It's quite jarring, but in a nice way, because then the jarring, remember what we were talking about last time, you know, dissonance, you have to be a careful treatment of dissonance. So that's very dissonant there, but then he, he goes to a, a resolution, the C to the E is very- I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? A, a dissonant symphony you said? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Dis dissonances we treat very carefully. We want oh, to carefully. Very carefully. Uh, sorry, the Aussie acts, the Aussie, you know, uh, the Aussie twang. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we, he, he emphasizes the dissonance, which is really nice. And then he resolves it to the, the C to the E there, which is also really nice too. So there's lots of, there's lots of lovely moments created, you know? Um, and then if we go to the next phrase, it's almost like a parallel period, right? We've talked about parallel periods a lot, but the the that would the first four bars would be the question, the second four bars would be the answer. But instead of repeating the answer, instead of the answer being a direct repetition of the question, it's a it's it's the same, very very similar. It's like the same rhythm, and the same texture, but with different pitches. The pitches are change. Um, Fascinating. What kind of style would you call that in, in writing? I don't know. Maybe neo-romanticism is hmm. probably the closest one. Yeah, because it's mazurka is, you know, uh, very, uh, very characteristic of the romantic period. And um, but he's using a lot of unusual harmonies, especially in harmonies. The texture is very mazurka like you've got the kind of like melody it's almost like a piano texture melody up, up the top and then the left hand sort of playing the accompaniment. Hmm. So, it it kind of reminds me a little of Chopin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that hit Chopin would be the, you know, the number one, you know, when you think of Mazurka. Yeah. So, uh, if we, so if we keep going, So now it's like we've got so the first one set feels like F minor. The second phrase feels like F sharp minor. Now, so it's like gone up a half step. That's what that's what it feels like. Um, this is fascinating to me. It's, it's, it's fascinating analyzing this because it's it's not like anything that we've analyzed before. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's throwing you know, throwing a lot, a lot, he's using a lot of things in, in different ways, but lots of things we've talked about, but just using them differently. Um, how, how would you describe a tendency tone in that piece? Yeah, well, that, that G flat, I think, what we talked about earlier, that dissonance, that would be a tendency tone there, which he resolves. Usually tendency tones resolve up or down by, by step or by half step. So that the G flat resolves to the F. And it kind of keeps going. It's a really nice little line there. Chromatic, you know, chromatic melody. And then he does, maybe he does the same thing in the next phrase. sure what harmony is going on in that bar but again we've got a dominant to tonic relationship in the bass we've got e to a in the bass like we had g to c before now we have e to a so he's using a very similar relationship there 
Uh, the melody is chromatic again. Uh, uh, A, oh, not as chromatic though. It's A to G natural to F natural. Actually, so it's now it's using, now he's using whole steps instead of half steps. So in this bar, he used half steps in bar two. And in bar six, he's using whole steps for the melody. So half steps and then half steps. And then in the, in the answer, whole step. So that's interesting too. So he uses half steps there and he uses whole steps here. Is, is there following any kind of form like binary or? I'd have to see the whole piece. Uh, I've only got one page. I can't remember um, from listening to it. I can't remember what form I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if, if he's used, I think mazurkas often will be ternary form, but, um, well, yeah, I'd, I'd have to see the whole piece. This time it's nice. He puts some little tendency tones in the accompaniment. If you hear those tendency tones, he goes. Hear that tendency tone, the B? Yeah. A, and he does it again. The B again. This time in the middle voice, B to A. So this, that's a beautiful chord, isn't it? That's gorgeous. I, I know that Kyle uh, writes a lot of choral work, yeah. you know, for voice. And I don't know if somehow uh, that's being translated into this piece at all. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know his style um, outside of this piece. So I'm not, sh I'm not sure when, you know, when choral, choral music, still still can have just like I, I i my guess is just like you know if you say someone writes guitar music that could mean a whole spectrum of of different things so um i'm not quite sure what his choral style is like but it's very good it's to me this is very very guitaristic and very mazurka like it's like he understands Mazur the mazurka very well i think um wow so what kind of chord was that last chord what would you well, I think the thing that I'm, I, I would like to know about this is, you know, yeah. like, are we in F minor or A flat or? Yeah, or, I don't, I don't think we're in a key. Um, or at least not. We, we're we're in keys, but only for a little while. It's a very open, open landscape, you know. Um, well, that's how I. That's how I'd, I'd love that would be, be the great thing about if we had him here, you know, to ask him these well, questions. Like, would you would you mind if we're recording this? I think he might get a kick out of out of out of. Uh, yeah, or, we are know, recording. It. Yeah, it's being recorded. Oh, so. Would, would yeah. you would you mind if I sent it to him? Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That way. Uh, yeah, I would love to invite him to, to join a, uh, a session. That would be awesome. I hope. Really? He, yeah, he doesn't mind how I'm. Like yeah, pulling apart his music a bit. I know. So sometimes well, composers I, don't really think about these. They they're just writing, you know, and it it's not it's not really. But maybe with him, he he might be very conscious of a lot of these things. I don't know. Um, I think he'd be he probably would be if he's yeah, you know, the profile. Yeah, and, it would be that, it so. would be great for you guys to to meet too. You know, I'll I'll, yeah. I'll send it to him with if, with your permission if it's okay. Of course, yeah. Any any yep. Yep. Yeah, I'd like to just go a little further if you could. So, I, I sure, really like sure, that yeah. Um, Last so on, this, on this chord, it's kind of like 
it's kind of like F major seven with the with a G that resolves with a tendency tone in the middle that resolves. Boy, that's beautiful. And then the harmonics really add a nice um, color to the chord too. So that the whole bar is sort of like an F major seven chord in a way to me. Boy, isn't that a gorgeous voicing of, of that though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, we've got mo motives. I'm really noticing that the, that set, the melody is the same rhythm, the dotted, <coughs> excuse me, dotted quarter note, eighth quarter, and then the same thing in the melody. And then we go to what is this called? E sharp, G sharp, C sharp, F natural. Whoa. Pretty sure that's right. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. No, how do you play that? G, D sharp. I had one note wrong there. Uh, C sharp, F. Is that F? Or is it A? Is it F, I think? Yeah. F natural too. Is that shape? I have to play it down. I'll play it down here. So it's F, D sharp. I've got D sharp, G sharp, probably B sharp, not a C. Oh no, C sharp, sorry. And uh I reckon it's E sharp, not F natural. So C, uh, what have we got there? C, E, G with a D sharp. It's like some kind of like sus two chord. C sharp, sus two or something. Right? So that's C sharp major. And then there's the sus two on the bottom which is like a tendency tone because it resolves down to the C sharp there. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I've really never cool. thought about having a, having a sus on the top, on the on bottom the of the chord. That goes down. Yeah. That's very hard to play though, because if you want to hold, see, this is, there, there are some clues that, um, that he's not a guitar player because some of these, some of the things are a bit, uh, challenging, like with the voicings to hold, yeah. to hold this chord down and then move that bass note is, unless there's an, I'd have to think for a while if there's another way to do it, but I can't, I can't get to the C sharp whilst holding these notes. So hmm. if he's, if he's watching, I'm just giving a little bit of practical, unless, unless there's a guitarist who knows, another guitarist who knows what to do. Oh no, there's a way to do it. Oh gosh, it's actually, it's actually not that. Yeah, okay. not too bad. That's beautiful. So it's almost like this melody that's in the bass now. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Major or E not E nine would we call it E? It's like E major seven with the with the F sharp in there. So if you stack thirds, you know, I think you'd know this chord <laughs> better than me. You know, D sharp. So, so, like so just to clarify something, um, it's a ninth if you have the seventh in the chord. But if it doesn't have the seventh, then it's a sus. Is that correct? Uh, it depends. It depends on the function of what's on the context of what's going on. So if the note is resolving, like in this case, it's just leaving it as a chord twice. So, so I'm more tempted to say it's E nine or E major nine. I don't even know what the best terminology is for that. But if, if it, if the F sharp were to resolve, to 
um, down or up or something, then I'd say that it's a tendency tone that's resolving. Like I did here, I said this, this was um, C sharp sus two because this, the second resolves down two goes down to one. But if it was a chord without that resolution, then you'd have to call it like C sharp sus. What would you call mm. that? It's, if you if you stack that into C E G B D, so that's uh, one three five seven. Yeah, so then you could call it a nine C C nine C sharp nine. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, and then it goes to from that, you know, to there's a there's a special relationship in that, you know, that shift. There's a real shift. Can you hear that shift? Like yeah, we go from one. It's like one color in a painting, and we shift to a completely different color or something. That's what I'm. That's how I hear it. Even though they're fairly related, well, we've got the E sharp in there. Where do we have the E sharp? Why did I see that? Why did I say that? Oh, because it's C. I see. Yeah. Um, and then so we get this chord three times. So we're making a point of it. Yeah. So that's kind of like what maybe would be the A section or something. I'd, I'd have to see the whole piece, but we go into a new bit of a new section and then it looks more contrapuntal now, I would say. Um, the accompaniment is a bit more melodic, maybe, or a bit more equal to the melody in some ways. Would you would you say that that is following the counterpoint that we were studying? In in like, some uh, in some very very loose ways. Um, three species. Like <laughs> yeah, um, because we get th three notes per bar in the in the um, bass, and then the melody is quite free above that. So. Uh, but I'm seeing again motives as well in the melody. We've got the, if you look at that melody there, dotted quarter, eighth, 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 dotted quarter, eighth, eighth, eighth. Um, uh, Daniel, what was the difference between a sequel and a motive? A sequence, do you mean? Yeah, sequence, excuse me. A sequence is um, when you repeat something. Uh, up or down, higher or lower, when you repeat a melody higher or lower, multiple times. Oh, okay. Um, a motive is when you're repeating a, well, yeah, a sequence in some ways, a sequence and motive are related, but a motive is when you have something, some repeating element that it could be the rhythm. It could be, it's usually either rhythm or pitch, but the thing is they don't have to be, like a sequence will usually be the same melody and the same rhythm being repeated up and down, but a motive can be the same rhythm or the same pitch, but they can be independent of each other. So you could have the same pitches repeating each other, but with different rhythms and different textures and everything. And you say, that's a, that's a motive. That's a, um, yeah, that's, that's a, a motive of pitches, or you could have rhythms that are repeating each other. Like we're seeing here, repeating rhythms. And we say, that's a rhythmic motive. Because there's no other than the rhythm, the the pitches don't really share. You know, there's no, there's no parallel or similarity in the melody, in the pitches of the melody. So we've got. I'm sorry reading this, so So what I would probably do uh 
in terms of learning, I'd probably play the melody on its own first, just to get a, a sense of what's going on. That's the melody, beautiful melody, isn't it? It is. Yeah. That feels like a tendency tone to me. Wow. A little bit too. He's really, he's playing on semitones a little bit again because we've got the A sharp to the B that's quite prominent. And then the E flat to the D is quite prominent. And then the C to the B is quite prominent as well. So that, that, that makes, that's what sort of creates a lot of ex, expressivity in this. Also, there's some semitone there, B to C as well. Um, and then the accompaniment. So that's the accompaniment. Very Deep. nice. Yeah. yeah. Combine them together. I'll, I'll give it a go. Uh, I would need to practice that quite a lot to to really make sense of it. I'm starting to get. It's there's a lot happening between those two voices, right? I mean, you play each one and independently, there's so much going on. So when you put them together, there's this really nice dialogue. But I, I'd have to re, I'd have to practice it so that I can not think about the mechanics so much. But yeah, beautiful. it's very dense. I mean, it's it, very it's, dense. Uh, yeah. yeah, but beautiful. Yeah. Uh, let's try one more time. playing it very slow compared to what's written but um it's beautiful there's something really nice about that that rising up to the something something very special about that we're kind of going to a b b major sort of a sound there but then it doesn't last long Gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous. One more line, one more. One more, one more line. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. A nice shift again from that yeah. A major to it's like an E major seven, but the E the D sharp is spelled as an E flat. Oh no, nine E nine again because we've got the F sharp in there too. 
that's nice. And then at the start, no, then something about counterpoint that I should mention is that as a rule, if one voice is going to be active, the other one will usually drop out a little bit. So okay. that's what we're kind of getting here. Like this, this voice drops out whilst that one repeats. And then this one drops out and then this one moves. And then yeah, that one moves, that drops out a bit, just one note. And then that, and then that one moves. You see how that creates that kind of call and response? Yeah. Voices, yeah. And that's so, isn't that amazing uh, yeah. that all good music has that? Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah. It's hard to escape those types of things, so. Sorry. Harmonically, you know, or they've got the A chord there, we've got the E chord there, E9, and then there's a bit of a E sort of sus <laughs> happening in there as well. Um, when it's contrapuntal like this, it's it's tricky to, you know, come up with like harmonies for that. But I get the motive is keeps sticking out to me. He's repeating that rhythm. He's repeating a rhythm again. Yeah. See that? It's like from there to there. It's an exact repeat of rhythm and texture. You see that? Yeah. And then. And then he changes it. Changing the texture. That's a great way to create contrast. You know, this is very, this has a very ethereal sound because it's high and con contrapuntal call and answer between the voices. And then, and then he goes to these octaves, which are very heavy and dense and these rich chords. So that it creates like a, creates like, um, um, contrast or um yeah yeah contrast kind of thing there's, there's another word i'm trying to think of am i playing the right note there it's not f sharp it's f natural sorry Yeah, no, it's very nice. It's it's the kind of music. It's in some ways, it's very like I think it's very in. It, there's a certain, there's a kind of intellectual um, nature to how it's constructed. I don't know exactly. How, so you have to really dig into it to understand it a little bit. But at the same time, it's still very expressive and and colorful and and has lots of beautiful contrasts and and movements and, and phrases and things like that. But you have to kind of dig a little deeper than, than your standard. Um, he's really throwing a lot, like packing a lot into it. Every phrase is a, like from one bar to the next, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to, to think about. Mm. And that's what makes listening to it. Sometimes when something's, especially if it's like a short piece and it's packed with like, all these types of things. Sometimes it can be a little bit like, like overwhelming. Like to, when you first listen to it, it's like, whoa, that's that, you know, so it might take a few, like a, a few listens to it might kind of 
it, it will bring out more of the, you know, the beauty that's that's underneath. Yeah, it's really, really beautiful. Did I send you a recording of yeah, the, of yeah, the piece? yeah, yeah. So I had I had one listen to it, and I did notice a lot of beautiful things. But I'd have to listen to it again, probably a couple more times, to really appreciate every nuance that is packed in there. You know. <laughs> yeah. No, maybe I can certain. play it too. Which is which for me, it's even more helpful if I can play it because then I can, I can really see the patterns and understand the harmony a bit more. Um, yeah. And, and how, how would you say, like, putting terminology to this piece, like we've been talking about, um, how does that help you play it better in your mind? Oh, you pick up on all the, especially tension and resolution. I think it's one of the, the key things. Also shifts in harmony. Um, so when you know, knowing that there's a really colorful shift in harmony, you, you might, you know, play it with one chord with a certain color and the other with another color. It helps me reading it. Cause like when I see, when I recognize chord shapes, um, you know, D major, B minor, E, uh, like that chord, I kind of, you know, could recognize that as a. At first, I thought it was E major seven, but then I saw the F sharp in there too. So that chord is quite easy to play. That one, you just bar the fourth fret and add your fourth finger on the on the on the fifth string, and then um, and then you got the chord there. Some chords are a bit harder to form, like that one. That's C sharp. But once I know it, once I know that it's a C sharp major chord, I'm just thinking of this, you know, this kind of shape. Which would be uh, what would the equivalent be? It's like the equivalent of that in the first position. So he's just going. A nice little movement you can do. You know, you could transpose that if you wanted to do it on the on a G chord. Yeah. We usually do put that on the top, don't we? Like that. Exactly. But it's yeah. nice to hear it. It gives it a bit, it's a bit more color almost when it's in the bass. It yeah. makes it very unstable. Hmm. Kind of like a cloud. It reminds me of a, a rolling cloud or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd love to know what sort of imagery or feelings or, you know, cause what we're just talking about all intellectual stuff, you know, what chords this, what's this phrase, what's this interval. But at the end of the day, it really is usually is some sort of, you know, mood or imagery or yeah. something that, that, that he's going for. And if it might be, I don't know if there's one pervading, you know, mood or something, or if, or if he's thinking like moment to moment, different, different sort of feelings and imagery and it's almost like a to me it's like a like a very it's like a, a painting with this lots of different scenes in it or something as mm. opposed to your more traditional mazurka where it would be like one you know one image do, one do mazurkas do yeah. mazurkas usually uh, change keys a lot like is is there a, a formula to it um Usually, I think the standard is just, you know, ternary form. A section will be in one key, let's say A minor, and your B section will be in like C major, and then you go back to, and then you go back to A. Oh, I'm thinking yeah. of Maria Luisa, which is one of the guitar's most popular.
section and then the B section. So that's it. That's sort of your typical mazurka structure. I think ternary form. It's beautiful. Did, did Barrios ever do any mazurkas? Ah, uh, yes, Barrios uh, mazurka appassionata, which is a much more complicated one. Overall, it's it's overall you could say a loose ternary form, but 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 there's lots of like subsections and expanded. He really expands the mazurka out. A lot more in terms of form, um, but I have to look. I, well, I'm sorry. What was the name of that one, please? Uh, Mazurka Appassionata. Wow. Um, oh, it's yeah. It's actually got a very similar structure. It's like A minor in the um, uh, A section. And then in the B section, there's like after a while you eventually get to the b section and it's we're in a major and then it goes back to a minor so the the, the like the simplified framework is still ternary form going minor a minor a major and then back to a minor but in between barrios does all these other things where he's you know stretching out where did barrios ever learn <laughs> wasn't he wasn't he like in, in, in a tribal indian in the woods or something um not not necessarily he 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 marketed himself like that um because he to to sort of create a bit of a story for well you know from what from what i know he kind of marketed himself like that so that he would have some like an interesting story to try and bring you know bring people in and Maybe also he had a, he had a connection, I think, to to the native indigenous sort of culture of of his area, the the Paraguayans. Um, um, but I don't think he was. I, I um, there's actually a documentary you can watch on YouTube about him. Really, which which it's it it it's not it's not super clear. It doesn't give a super clear picture about his life, but it gives you an idea. Um, he, he, I think he was very well, he was actually very well trained. And when he was, even when he was young, um, I think he was trained in poetry and, and music from a young age. Um, so he wrote a bit like a, he, he was a bit of a writer too, like writing poetry and things like that. Really? Is there any of, any of his works? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can Love read. To see that. There's a book called Six Silver Moonbeams. Um, oh, oh that that's about him that's all about him and that's one of his po that's the name of one of his poems i think um i've got one of his quotes one of his i've got one of his um the musical art he wrote like a I can read it to you if you want. Sure. Well, poem here, the musical art. So the musical art is a sacred spring, little Susan, hidden among green palms, offering water to our souls, so fresh, so clear, so crystalline that the mind could not imagine its equal, an oasis that heaven wanted to be our earthly paradise, a comforting oasis where there rests for an instant the lost caravan on its uncertain trip through the desert of life. Oh, how many have felt the urge to dwell in those green fields, in their desire for comfort, in their eternal thirst for peace and love. However, not everyone is given to be guardians of the sacred spring. To that high mystery where the mystery of music officiates, only go those beings who with magical and exceptional powers master the circuit where there vibrates an infinity of emotion. And you, beautiful little Susan, Signora of the blessed shining spark, by your earnest desire, now humble, you will receive a great priestess of that fountain. 
and its nymphs insistently will give you the melody of your voice, a divine voice whose sounds elevate our hearts to God. Wow. What did <laughs> Susan? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that's um, just a, like a metaphor, like he's just speaking to to that's a little, you know, little Susan, or if it was an actual person, I'm not sure. But um, very, very deep stuff, just like his music, you know. Yeah, very, thanks very for deep. sharing it. That was that yeah. was really great, Daniel. Thank you so much. Well, well, well are you are you going to teach your other class? I've next? got my other class. Gonna... You're welcome to join if you if you like. Um, sure, well, I might I might just monitor it. I don't, I don't think I'm. Yeah, you can just be on in the background. We're going to talk about. Um, Twinkle, twinkle, little star, harmonizing it with chord substitutions and um, cadential six fours, which I think you are familiar with. So, yeah, yeah, that's great. At, at some point, uh, uh, I'll be sending my tuition probably Wednesday, not tomorrow, if that's oh, okay. Sure. No, and I'll, I'll, I'll pay it in full, and then at some point, I'd like to see if I could hire you to help me with some of. Uh, this computer musical computer stuff that I'm really unfamiliar with, uh, Sibelius. I'm, I want to buy a nice computer program and a nice computer, and and have it all set up. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I can. Yeah, that would be good. I know that. Yeah, I've had some other like inquiries from other teachers as well. They say like when they hear about my setup, they kind of like want to learn a bit more. So I'd be happy to share with you. Yeah. Some, some ways you can get a, a setup to. Yeah. You yeah. Let's talk about or, that this week. Hmm. I want to buy something later on in the week, like maybe Friday, I'm going to buy a nice Apple, whatever you recommend the Mac hmm. or Apple. And so I want to go with Sibelius, that other program, you know, I haven't had too much fortune okay. with that. Sure. Um, we'll do that. And uh, if you, one last thing, if you could kindly send me the link to the next class, please. Yep, I'll do that. And then, and then um, you'll you'll send me this lesson that we just had. And I'll send you the recording. Yeah, and you can feel free to pass it on. Yeah, yeah, I'll send. I think you might get a kick out. Mm. Great, Daniel. Great lesson. Thank you so much, Michael. My pleasure. We'll see you. See you next time. See you in the next class. All right, yeah, see you in the next <laughs> class. I'll send you the link in Facebook right now. Beautiful. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Bye bye. All the best. Bye bye.